welcome back. So as you can see, I've got everything installed now for this uh, radiator slash intercooler setup there. There was the outlet pipe there and there's the intercooler. So the, the hot coolant goes in the bottom of that and then flows up through it and then comes out the top and then goes into the tanks on the other side. And as you can see, I've got the couplings in there for the inlet and the outlet and a couple of mounting brackets in there to hold it in place as well. And this inlet scoop got that sort of mounted in there with just the four um, bolts there screws with uh, nuts on the back side there and you can see they're into the intercooler and that's sealed around the edge there so that should do the trick and then on the outlet here I cut that opening I didn't put any sealant around there I just want to see how that play as it plays out but I put some telltales there so I can see how the air is flowing out of there all right so the first thing I wanted to do is just do a bit of an endurance test again just static on the ramp so um, I've started up the aircraft and you know just taxied it over on the ramp there next to the hangar and I'm doing basically a full power run again after it comes up to temperature and just seeing how long it can hold it at full power for and then you know back off but based upon when you know, one of the temperatures hits the maximum so this is the run that I did here and you can see um, the teal line here is the coolant temperature so I actually had the heater on there um, initially while it was warming up and that was keeping the temperature uh, low there on the coolant in the engine and it turns out that I can just run the heater with the fan setting on number one one out of six and so I actually don't even get much hot air coming in the cabin if I don't want it but it is cycling the whole uh, loop there because uh, the valve opens up fully uh, so anyway then I turned it off there and let it let the engine warm up more quickly because that was sort of holding the temperature down and then I ran the engine up a little bit higher rpm there for a little bit just to get it to come up to temperature and then when I hit 145 on the oil temp there that's when I went to, to go to full power and at the same time turned the heater on there to get that loop running again and as you can see you know all that coolant in there because now I've got almost another extra gallon there with that uh, intercooler so of course it drops the temperature all the way back down again went down to 75 degrees because it had already warmed up a little bit uh, when I was running it um, prior to that and then you can see now it takes quite a long time on that coolant temperature now for it to come up um, and, you know I'm still not moving so there's really no uh, air flowing through that intercooler but even just the thermal mass of that thing and the extra gallon has bought me some more time there so um, I ended up running the engine up here at full power from the, the 519 seconds to 632 seconds so about a minute and a half um, yeah, was that 90 seconds? Oh, sorry, 110 seconds, almost two minutes, yeah. And then uh, what was the limiting factor there was the, uh, I was looking at the um, temperatures here, the EGT, so it was up to 1650 again. That was why I decided to pull the power back at that point. And so when I got the power back there uh, a little bit, I dropped it back to 80% throttle. And of course now I'm watching uh, the oil temperatures because the, when you drop it back there, the EGT just, just starts to come down here. And as you can see, it stabilizes there pretty, pretty comfortably around about 14, 20 degrees, which you know I think I could run there all day long. Um, so anyway, I'm watching the oil temperature. And this time I wanted to see what would happen if I let the oil temperature go over um, sort of 250 or so, 255. And I was sort of picking 265 as a maximum just to see if anything weird happened. Uh, not that I want to run it there for any length of time, but just wanted to see if anything weird happened. And as you can see, it got up there 265 and that was the limiting factor. So as it started to approach it there, it was 256. I backed off the power to 50%, 50% throttle, at which point, you know, the oil temp seems to stabilize there. Um, or if it's moving up, it's moving very slowly. So 265 there. And then I just dropped the power back a little bit more and of course then the oil temp starts to come down so you know obviously hit the peak there and so the power there 33% fuel so this is about 33% or actually a little bit more in terms of the throttle. Um, the throttle was, where is the throttle? Um, on the other one I think, yeah 40% throttle. So at 40% throttle now um, everything basically stabilizes there that oil temp's not going up anymore. Coolant temp's still coming up, but as you can see, it's gonna stabilize eventually. And once there's air flowing through there, 
it won't be a problem anymore. Um, it should, you know, just stay low. But even here at this point, I was only 197 degrees on court, so I still had a lot of headroom to go there. And so I just let it back off there and just kept it there. And, of course, the oil temp starts to come down now. So I kind of found the sweet spot there of sitting on the ramp, 40% throttle. It basically can maintain that. And I think eventually you see there with the... Um, coolant temp there eventually it's sort of it's going to stabilize there probably underneath the oil temperature those two are just going to come together somewhere or in between these two I would imagine where they would stabilize because that was still coming down so you probably guesstimate that the oil and the coolant temperature would basically stabilize around about 245 there if I just let it sit at 40 percent throttle now um, and if you want to compare this uh, to the first flight run oh actually there's a couple of things let me show you here so then after that um i just let it cool down a little bit and then i went to do a quick run down the runway just slowly and as i was taxing down here um i had i turned the uh i had turned the heater loop off around about here and so actually things start to cool down because all that hot coolant that's in the nose there isn't being injected back into the engine so it's just air running through the uh, radiator now so that was cooling down and then uh, I turn the heater back on again. Of course, all that hot coolant comes back into the system again. But even just taxing along there, you could see it didn't take long. And then all of a sudden, it starts to come down there. So I was getting air going through the intercooler, even though I was only tax taxing at about uh, 16 knots. And then, uh, so yeah, everything cooled down very quickly at that point. And then just did a little short run. I didn't even get to full power on the runway because it's pretty gusty and crosswinds there. I just I only wanted to get to maybe 60 knots. Um, but what was interesting there, if you look here, this is right right after I went down the runway here, you can see the coolant temperature just fairly consistently just dropping off here. Um, and that's, you know, I suspect that's the extra cooling coming in there that's pulling it down because the oil temperature had gone up when I went to, you know, almost full power, not quite full power, but... Um, oil temperature went up again and so more heat in the engine but with the coolant combination I have now or the coolant combination I have now the coolant temperature started to drop down as I was coasting down the runway there so that's a good sign as I said I only got to 60 knots so uh, yeah and if, if I just do a quick comparison here to um, what the first uh, flight was like which was a while ago now I know it's just taken a long time to get to a second flight, but I want to make sure everything's looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, if we look here at how that looked, you can see there that just even today's run out on the ramp, I had the power, this is the blue line versus the white line. This is um, your fuel, the fuel being injected. Um, I can hold power much longer now than I did on that first flight without the temperatures getting out of control. So that's there's the engine oil temp went higher because the other when I did that first flight, I only let it go to 250, 252. That's all I felt comfortable with. But now I feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, that, you know, I can take it to 265 without any problems. Um, but the coolant temperature here, you can see this is where I turned the heater on here when on the first flight and it didn't take long and it just caught up to the oil temp there above it, the white, the two white lines. And then today when I turned it on after the fact, it went down lower. Obviously, it was a little bit cooler outside. Uh, but you can see how much longer it takes to catch up to the oil temp now. So I bought myself all kinds of time there. So, you know, now I, I you know, run it for uh, several minutes now at, at least 80% um, power without having any problems. So uh, that's good, and then we'll have a look at the video and see if we can see on the video what was happening with the air coming out of that, uh, that outlet there for the intercooler. All right, so here I'm sitting at the hold short line, and this is the camera that I had mounted on the wing. And as you can see here, uh, this is a close-up, just looking at the telltale. So I had them pretty much you know, all the way around that pipe there. And it's a bit difficult to see, so I'm just basically starting to roll out on the on the runway right now, and just trying to see, you know, how much flow is coming out of there. And you know, I, it's it's very difficult to see what's going on here. And as you'll see, as I start to pick up speed, uh, there's a lot of turbulent air around that whole area. Um, 
So again, it's, it's difficult to determine you know, how much flow is coming through there, but I imagine if there's turbulent air there, then there's definitely some kind of flow happening. Um, at least those telltales are not getting sort of sucked back in uh, to that uh, pipe or anything like that. So I think really the test is gonna be how it performs in the air, just to see how much extra cooling I get. Um, yeah, because it's diff very difficult here and I can't think of a way right now of mounting a camera onto the bottom of that floor plane very readily without making some holes or something. I might be able to put one onto one of the screws for the access covers, uh, but I'll have to see. And something else that was interesting, if you look, I've put telltales there along the um, intersection there between the fuselage and the floor plane and also you know, right at the edge there of the elevator. And you can see there's quite a lot of turbulence um, the edge of that elevator there and I guess because I haven't hit the speed yet where the elevator sort of tucks in all the way um, but definitely a lot of swirling going on around there and I'll, I'll have to see you know when uh, it's airborne the next time whether that all smooths out once that elevator is retracted a little bit more uh, but the air seems to be tracking pretty nicely along that intersection there on the top of the floor plane um, which is good although it's definitely following the fuselage if you look at those telltales and not just going directly backwards so that uh, the boundary layer is quite wide there, and about, seems like about six inches wide where it's deflecting and uh, following the shape of the fuselage. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting to look at. Yeah, so finally, the next thing I'm gonna do now is just take the cowling off again and just check over everything because that was the first time I've taken the engine up to that 265 degrees. Just have a look and see if anything looks uh, amiss under there, check the oil and everything again, and then uh, get all prepared for um, the next flight so um, that's going to depend on the wind again I want to try and get calm winds or just you know slight winds from the south or mostly south so I can depart on 17 again so I have the option to land on 4 uh, if I need to for some reason so I'm just going to be in that holding pattern again waiting for the weather and um, we'll see how that goes and then I'll have another video for you, so anyway, uh, tune in again for the next one, hope you enjoy this one, and we'll see you on the next one.